Wall Street had its worst day of the year amid worries about continuing divided government in Washington and bad news out of Europe. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost nearly 313 points to close at 12,932. The Nasdaq fell 74 points to close at 2937. For more on what happened, I spoke earlier with economist Hugh Johnson, who runs his own investment services company in Albany, New York. So, Mr. Johnson, tell me, how do we distribute the weight of what's pulling the market down? Is it the fears in Europe? Is it the fears about the fiscal cliff? Uh, it's hard to tell which is more important. They're both very important. And, you know, today sort of dramatized both. Uh, the European Union uh, formally reduced its forecast for what's going to happen to the European Union, their economy, in 2013, and they reduced it very, very sharply. That's very bad news. It's particularly bad news for any U.S. company that's doing business with Europe or selling things to Europe. Obviously, their, their revenues and their earnings are going to suffer from that. So that's a big part of it. And, and the other part of it is, is the, the concerns, the ongoing concerns about the fiscal cliff, meaning the, the automatic increase in taxes and, and spending cuts that are going to occur at the federal government level at the end of this year unless something's done about it. And the belief is that, um, you know, with things being sort of unchanged in Washington, Obama winning, the Republicans still controlling the House of Representatives, the Democrats controlling the Senate, that it's business as usual, and that we'll have trouble um, avoiding that fiscal cliff at the end of the year. That might mean bad things for the U.S. economy. So I think those are both very significant concerns and weighed on investors today, and they obviously responded by selling stocks. Okay, and also briefly, we heard late today that Greece passed its austerity measures through their parliament. Is that likely to give the markets a bounce? Yeah, I think you're going to get a bounce, and I think that that certainly is going to help give give it a little bit of a bounce. Um, I'm a little surprised they, the, the austerity measures. There's a lot of unsettled people in Greece. They're, they're, the economy of Greece is clearly suffering from the austerity measures that have been imposed on Greece, an economy that's in a recession. Yep. I think those same kinds of concerns are about the U.S. imposing uh, fiscal restraint in the form of higher taxes and less spending on our economy. Uh, but I think you'll get a little bit of a bounce tomorrow, yes. All right, Hugh Johnson, thanks for your time. A new storm threatened the northeast today with wind, water, and snow. Its arrival came just over a week after Hurricane Sandy battered the region. Police cars in New York City patrolled low-lying neighborhoods, urging people to evacuate again. The approaching nor'easter brought a wintry mix of cold and snow and possibly minor flooding in already damaged coastal areas. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. We haven't and won't order the kind of large-scale evacuation that we did in advance of Hurricane Sandy, uh, but if you are experienced, uh, experiencing significant flooding during Sandy, uh, you should consider taking shelter with friends and family at a safer spot or using one of the city storm shelters. In New Jersey, thousands of storm-weary people braced for their brush with the new storm, even as cleanup efforts continued from Sandy. Governor Chris Christie suggested it was a little like the biblical plagues. When I finally got that uh, final kind of uh, forecast that I got last night, uh, I said, I'm waiting for the locusts and pestilence next. Now, you know, I... The storm could also bring wind gusts of 65 miles an hour, bedeviling efforts to restore power to more than 600,000 customers still in the dark in New Jersey and New York. You know, we may take a setback in the next 24 hours. You need to be prepared for that. I'm prepared for that. I hate setbacks. I don't tolerate them usually very well, but this one I can't control. Um, the weather is what it is and we're going to have to deal with it. At regional airports, a new round of canceled notices went up as major airlines scrapped hundreds of flights into and out of the New York City region. And all construction in the city was halted after Sandy left a crane dangling from a Manhattan high-rise last week. The man behind an anti-Muslim film that triggered violence in the Middle East now faces one year in federal prison. Mark Basile Youssef was sentenced today in Los Angeles for violating probation on an old bank fraud conviction. The case is not related to the film Innocence of Muslims, which portrayed the Prophet Muhammad as a fraud and a womanizer. Diplomatic efforts to end the civil war in Syria entered a new phase today, hours after news of President Obama's re-election flashed around the world. British officials announced they will begin dealing directly with Syrian rebel leaders, and they urged the U.S. to join them. And Turkey confirmed it is in talks with NATO allies, including the U.S., to create a safe zone inside Syria. 
One plan would deploy Patriot missiles just inside Turkey to protect civilians inside the safe zone. Those are some of today's major stories.